Hello, in this video we are going to delineate a catchment using PC Raster in Python. This video follows a tutorial that you can find on gisopencourseware.org and is part of the course Programming for Geospatial Hydrological Applications. You can find the link in the description of this video. The tutorial is provided in a Jupyter Notebook, but because we want to visualize the results in QGIS, we are going to run the instructions from the QGIS Python console. This will work with uh, PC Raster and Python in a Conda environment, but if you have installed uh, PC Raster for the PC Raster Tools plugin, you can also run QGIS uh, without a Conda environment and use a PC Raster that comes with QGIS. If you have installed it through the OSGO 4 w installer, for example. So the PC Raster Tools plugin provides a graphical user interface to the uh, PC Raster Python operations and you can easily install it uh, in QGIS and have a look. There are other courses and videos available. Um, and this will add uh, these tools to the processing toolbox. And these tools are named exactly the same as the operations in uh, Python. And if you click on a tool, you can always click on the link to the documentation. You can find there how to uh, write the syntax and uh, all the parameters are documented and there are examples on how to write this in Python code. But for this tutorial, we're going to use the Python console in QGIS. We can launch the Python console by clicking the Python icon and we can open an editor by clicking this icon. We can rearrange the screen a little bit. And uh, here you see a Python prompt as you also have in uh, the Jupyter Lab, or if you just uh, type Python at uh, the terminal. We can import uh, packages or libraries from the prompt. And the uh, first thing we need to do is to mosaic uh, the uh, tiles from SRTM. And uh, therefore we need to use glob and we need to use uh, gdal. And gdal is uh, from the OSGO uh, package. And we also need to import uh, the OS package. Because our current working directory is uh, where QGIS started, and we can get that information with os.getcwd, and we see that we are in osgeo4w bin, while we need to be in our data folder. So I'm going to use os.change directory, and there we give in a string with forward slashes the location which is PC Raster Tutorials slash PC Raster Catchment Delineation slash data. Let's check, and indeed we are now in the correct uh, folder. And we're going to create a list of input files with the SRTM uh, TIFF files. So using glob.glob .glob, we can search for file extensions or patterns, and here we look for TIFF files. These are the four SRTM tiles that you can see, and uh, this will generate a list. So if I print the input files variable, the result is a list with uh, each element, a string with the file name of the geotiff. Now we're going to create a virtual raster. We call the variable mosaic, and we use gdal build vrt, and it needs the uh, destination name, we call it mosaic vrt, that will be our output, it's a string, and as an input we use our list of files, the input files variable. When we type enter, it runs, but to save it to disk we need to uh, use mosaic.flushcache. You see I made a typo here because it's case sensitive, so I need to type it exactly in the correct way, where the C has to be a capital now when I uh, look in the browser panel, I can see the VRT file and I can drag it to the map canvas. So here's our uh, mosaic. This is very similar to what QGIS does uh, through the graphical user interface with creating a virtual uh, roster. GDAL is used in the back end. The next step is to reproject and uh, clip the uh, mosaic to a smaller area fitting our bounding box polygon. And we use this uh, little script here, uh, which uses uh, a function, reproject and clip, which needs an input raster, an output raster, projection, shapefile and resolution. 
and it uses uh, GDAL warp, which has uh, GDAL warp options. It needs the cutline DS name, which is our shapefile. Crop to cutline is uh, true. The format that we want is a GeoTIFF. Um, we add a projection and a spatial resolution for the output. And uh, you see then under below the function um, that the mosaic file name will be mosaic.vrt. And the polygon is uh, boundingbox.shp that's provided. EPSG is then the projection EPSG code, UTM zone 32 uh, north on WGS84. The spatial resolution is uh, 30 meters. And the DEM uh, subset that will be created will have the name DEM subset.tiff. And then we run the function with uh, these variables as an input. Let's run the script and check if the output is correct. It should appear in the browser panel. Sometimes you need to click the refresh button and there we see DEM subset.tiff. And if we remove the mosaic, we can uh, clearly see the result of uh, clipping and reprojection. It's uh, tilted because the projection of our project on the fly reprojection is in the geographic coordinate system EPSG 4326 and I'm changing it now to UTM 32 North and now we see that it's nicely clipped to the bounding box that was provided. Because we're going to use PC raster the next step is to convert the GeoTIFF to the PC raster format and we use this script here which uses GDAL translate. You can copy the script from the tutorial the Jupyter Notebook. After running this script, you will see a copy of the DM subset, which should be exactly the same, but then in the PC raster format. So far we have been using uh, only GDOT. So now we have the DEM in PC raster format and we can use that uh, for further calculations. First we need to read the DEM to uh, memory from the file, but uh, we see that we get an error and that's because we didn't import yet the PC raster package. So the read map operation is not uh, known. But after importing PC raster this works. The next step is to uh, calculate the flow direction uh, after filling the sinks. In PC raster this is done with one operation uh, which is called LDD create. And it has uh, four parameters to control the filling of the sinks. You can find that in the documentation. Here we will um, use very high values to make sure that all the sinks are filled. So the input is the DEM and then we use uh, the high numbers here for all the parameters to make sure that all sinks are filled. Running this will uh, take a while and you need to wait until you get back uh, the Python prompt here. Now it's back and you can uh, visualize the results or uh, continue the calculations. We can also run uh, the Aguila operation here from QGIS and you will see what happens if we do Aguila flow direction. It will create a pop-up with the map and the nice thing about PC raster is that uh, the LDD data type is visualized as uh, these uh, lines. So we can follow the flow direction and we can uh, query uh, the values. Here it says that uh, pixel flows to the east one to the southwest, west, north, etc. In QGIS there are also tools to convert the LDD format to uh, a grip file and to visualize it using the mesh styling functionality. There's another video showing that. Sometimes you're also interested in the filled DEM, which uh, is skipped in this step. If you want the filled DEM, you need to use exactly the same function, but then uh, change LDD create to LDD create DEM. So I create a new variable. DM filled and I change this to LDD create DM. Again this takes a while and when the prompt uh, returns you can also easily calculate the difference between the DM and the filled DM and you see that in this way the Python uh, console is a nice uh, raster calculator if you use the PC raster operators. And you can visualize it quickly in Aguila or report it to disk and uh, open the file in uh, QGIS in the map canvas. So here we see the areas that are filled and how much they are filled. And these are obviously the uh, 
depressions caused by the mines. I'm going to save the flow direction to disk and I call it ldd.map, ldd, local drain direction. That's the PC Rusted terminology for flow direction. And then I can drag it to the map canvas and there is our LED map. You can see that by using the Python console we lose our projections when we use PC Raster operations. When you use the PC Raster tools plugin with the uh, interface then uh, we make sure that the uh, projections are kept with the layers that you calculate. The next step is to determine the rivers and we'll first use the Strahler order method. So to create the Strahler orders, we use the stream order operation. The input is the flow direction map. Let's write it to disk for visualization. And we drag it to the map canvas. This is an ordinal raster, so we need to visualize it using the palleted unique values renderer. And we can choose a ramp from white to blue. So the more blue, the higher the strata order and the bigger the stream. And then we need to calibrate this with a reference layer to find out what the streams are. When we find out how many strata orders there are, we can also create a loop to uh, generate for each strata order uh, a raster. So let's calculate the maximum strata order by using uh, the map maximum operation that will find the highest value in the Strahler orders layer. And when I visualize it using Agila, you'll see that uh, this uh, operation results in the same value for all pixels. So the maximum value found in uh, a raster is assigned to all the pixels in the raster. That's a global function. Now with this information, we can create a script that uh, loops over the Strahler orders. So the maximum Strahler order is this map maximum operation that we just used. Um, but we need to have a value because we cannot uh, create a range with a raster. So there is the cell value operation from PC raster, which uh, has as an input a raster layer and then uh, the X and the Y uh, row column value. And it will report the value at that position. So in our case, the entire raster has the same values. So uh, 0, 0, 0,0 will do the job. But the result is a tuple, and uh, we need the first element of the tuple. So we also add a line of code, maximum strata order value equals maximum strata order tuple, and then element 0. And then we can create a loop for order in range from 1, because strata orders always start with order 1 to maximum Strahler order value, but the range in Python does not include the upper boundary. Therefore, we need to do plus one. So for each of these orders in this range, do stream equals if then Strahler orders larger equal than the current order, then uh, write Boolean one for those pixels and no data for the other pixels. And uh, write this to disk and we create a string for the file names uh, it's called stream, and then we add the order number and uh, dot map. The first one for pixels with style order one or larger, the second one for style order two and larger, etc. etc. And we can use that then for the calibration. So we can run the script, and we will see in the browser panel that this results in um, stream with style order numbers. And we can drag it to the map canvas. We need to hide a few layers and we can add OpenStreetMap in order to see how well this uh, matches with the uh, rivers on the map. So under XYZ tiles, you can find OpenStreetMap or use the one from the Quick Map Services plugin. And here you can compare the results with the rivers on the map and determine which Strahler order threshold we need to use to determine or to calculate our rivers. You can see that they better match uh, upstream, which is more natural than downstream. Another way of deriving the rivers is using the flow accumulation instead of the Strahla orders. So in that case, you can use the Accuflux operation from PC Raster, which needs as an input the flow direction layer. 
and a material layer and in our case we use a value of 1 which means that uh, we accumulate uh, the amount of pixels. We can uh, write this to disk and visualize it in the map canvas. The values are quite extreme from very high to very low values so I change to single band pseudo color and uh, choose a way to display this uh, better. Also here I use a ramp from white to blue and I'm going to change the bin max values and what works very well with these extreme values is a cumulative count cut where you see now the bigger streams in uh, darker blue. We also need to calibrate this result uh, with the reference layer like OpenStreetMap and then uh, if you have determined the accumulation threshold above which you consider um, something a river, a pixel belonging to a river, then uh, you can use the if-then operation. And in this case, we do it with uh, flow accumulation larger than 9000. Those pixels will get Boolean 1 and we consider those as a river. So let's write it to disk and uh, visualize it. And we can also compare it with uh, the Strahler 8 layer. So here we see the flow accumulation result. And you see that it's um, a bit different uh, from the uh, Strahler order result, but um, the larger streams are similar. The next step is to define the outlet on the stream. And uh, we can find the outlet by uh, tracing the stream downstream and see where, in this case, the ruler gets into the mouse. And we copy the coordinate from uh, QGIS. We can open a terminal from QGIS, which uh, ends up in the folder where we store our data. And there we can create a text file. You can also use Notepad. But here we use CopyCon location.txt, I paste the coordinates and I add an ID value 1. So the pixel that we will create will have value 1. And I use Ctrl Z to close this editor and to save the file. And I can use the call to map tool. I do dash n because I want a nominal output. Location.txt is the input table. Location.map is the output raster in PC raster format. And the clone, which determines the uh, extent and pixel size, uh, can be uh, any of our maps because they all are of the same dimension. And here we see that it has been uh, converted. So we can check it in uh, with map attributes. And there we see that the minimum and maximum value is 1. And we can also visualize this in uh, QGIS to see if it ends up at the location that we determined. We need to style it, palette the unique values because it's nominal data. And we see there the red pixel, which is our outlet. So we will use that for delineation of the catchment. So create a new variable outlet by reading the map from the disk. And I can use that in the catchment operation to delineate the catchment. I call the uh, variable ruler catchment because that's the name of this catchment. I use the catchment operation, which needs the flow direction as an argument and the outlet pixel. And I write the result to disk so we can visualize it in QGIS. When I zoom to the layer, I can see here the entire delineated catchment. Sometimes you don't have an outlet uh, coordinate, but you want to delineate all the catchments in the uh, DEM. Then you can use the pit operation to find all the depressions that it will consider as an outlet. And then you use the output of that to uh, use the catchment operation to delineate the catchments belonging to uh, those pits. Let's write it to disk and visualize in QGIS. You can use palleted unique values because they are nominal and here we see all the catchments and we can also clearly see the ruler catchment in, in there.
There are also ways to delineate subcatchments, and that's covered in uh, other videos and tutorials. There are also tools available, additional tools available in the resource sharing repository of QGIS. Now we would also like to automate this whole procedure instead of uh, doing all the steps with uh, separate um, commands on the command line. So here we have all the different steps written in uh, functions. And we need to uh, remove the change directory because we assume that we are already running this from the directory where the files are. Here we define um, the different uh, inputs need to adjust the coordinates to the ones that we have used. You can simply use type and then location.txt to get those values. And I can uh, copy them. Save the script. Make sure that you have uh, removed all the outputs from the previous uh, exercise. So you start clean. Make sure then that you set the uh, directory. And then you can run uh, the script. And when it's done, it produces the result with Aguila, but you can also find uh, the files on your hard disk and load it in the map canvas. We have catchment and channels. So you see that by automating uh, these things, you can have workflows calculated really fast. You can just play with some input uh, variables to change uh, the coordinates or the data layers. And uh, this is only a small step towards creating a tool in QGIS with an interface, which is basically a Python script uh, with some additional elements. Uh, belonging to the template of the framework of the processing toolbox in QGIS.